Hi fellas, perhaps you've heard about a so-called world's hardest easy geometry problem that's going around for a while. Well, chances are you have if you're watching this video, but if you haven't, here it is. Given the isosceles triangle ABC such as um, such that the angle A is equal to the angle B equal to 80 degrees, and um, point D belongs to the segment AC such that the angle DBA is 60 degrees, point E belongs to segment BC, such as angle EAB is 70 degrees. Now, letting the angle DEA being x, the task is to compute the value of x using only elementary geometry, such as, um, for example, sum of the measures of angles in a triangle is 180 degrees, right? Now, I've seen many demonstrations online that are incorrect or incomplete, and I stress on incomplete here. So I'm doing this video in order to hopefully clarify all the aspects of um, this problem. You are not allowed to use any trigonometry. Okay. Anyway, I will list at the end of the demonstration all the theory that has been used. If this is the first time you see this, I encourage you to pause the video and try it yourself for a while. Who knows, maybe you'll break it down. So we begin step number one. In triangle DAB, angle B is 60 degrees, angle A is 80 degrees. So what's left to reach 180 is 40 degrees. So angle ADB is 40 degrees. In triangle ABE, angle A is 70 degrees, angle B is 80 degrees. So what's left to reach 180? 30 degrees. Angle AEB is 30 degrees. In triangle ABC, the big one, I saw so this. Angle A is 80 degrees, angle B is 80 degrees, so angle C is 20 degrees. And that's step number one. Let's go to step number two. Let F be a point that belongs to the segment BC such that DF is parallel to AB. Okay, now triangle CDF is isosceles because the angle CDF equal to the angle CAB, they are correspondent angles. We have two parallel lines DF and AB intersected by the second CA, so correspondent angles CDF and DAB 80 degrees. Same as here on the right side, CFD corresponded angle to CBA 80 degrees. So now we can say that CDF is, a, is an isosceles triangle, so CD is equal to CF. Okay. Also, the angle ADF is 180 minus 80, so it's 100. Same as here, angle C, angle DFB 100 degrees. But because we know from the previous step that angle ADB is 40 degrees, now their difference 60 degrees here for the angle BDF. Okay, so that concludes step number two. Okay, let's go to step number three. In step number three, we are going to compare triangle ADF with triangle BFD. Alright, we have the common side DF. And the angle of 100 degrees here, ADF, 100 degrees here, DFB. So we have side angle. So now what we need to do is to show that AD is equal to BF. All right. So one would say, okay, there we go. Yeah, let's just not hurry up. We've shown previously that triangle CDF is isosceles. All right. So CD is equal to CF, but also. The big triangle ABC is isosceles with the base AB, so AC is equal to BC. But because DC is equal to FD, DC is equal to FC, sorry, then AD is finally equal to BF. And we have the side AD equal to BF, another side, common side, DF, and the angle between them 100 degrees. So triangle ADF and triangle BFD are congruent. All right. So, because they are congruent, this angle here, angle DBF, 20 degrees, is equal to this angle, DAF. So, this angle here it is 20 degrees. But because the big angle, DAB, is 80 degrees, then the angle FAB is 60 degrees. They're different, alright? Now, let G be the point of intersection between AF and BD. In triangle GAB, 
60 degrees angle A, 60 degrees angle B. So what's left for angle G then? Of course, also 60 degrees. Now, angle AGB and angle DGF are, how are they called? Vertical angles, right? So they are equal. All right. Now, in triangle DGF, we have this angle here, DGF 60 degrees, angle GDF from the previous point, we've shown that 60 degrees. So, again, angle DFG also 60 degrees. Alright, so triangle DFG is also equilateral, so, such as triangle ABG. Alright, that concludes step number 3. We go to step number 4. Step number four. Let point H belonging to the segment DF be chosen in such a way that CH is the bisector of the angle DCF. So DCH angle here is 10 degrees and the angle HCF is also 10 degrees here. All right. Now let's compare triangle D C H with triangle F C H. We have this angle here 10 degrees. We have this angle here 80 degrees. And this side between them, which is equal D C equal to C F. Alright, so triangles are congruent, so D H is equal to H F. Okay, but here the angle is 80 degrees, here is 10, so this is 90 degrees here. D H C is a right angle, but on the same way, in the, in the same way, FHC is a right angle. All right. So now we can say that H is in the middle of the segment DF, and also that CH is perpendicular to DF, knowing that CH is a bisector of the angle. Now we are going in triangle DGF. All right. Let H prime be a point that belongs to the segment DF with the property that GH prime is the bisector of the angle DGF. So 30 degrees here, 30 degrees here. Now we are comparing triangles GH prime DH prime G and triangle FH prime G. They have DG equal to GF because we've shown at the previous point that the triangle DGF is equilateral. This angle here of 60 degrees all right, and this angle here are 30 degrees. Angle, side, angle. Angle, side, angle. All right, so they are congruent. So dH prime, it is equal to H prime F. And uh, also 60 degrees, 30 degrees, so here it has to be 90 degrees. So 60 degrees here as well, 30 degrees here as well, here 90 degrees. So GH prime is perpendicular to DF. All right, so now, because dH is equal to HF, and dH prime is equal to H prime F. It means that H and H prime are one and the same point. Okay. And now because CH is perpendicular to DF and GH prime, now knowing it's H, so C, so GH perpendicular to DF. Now we know that not only that they are one and the same point, H and H prime, but also we know that the points C, H, and G are collinear. So H, H prime, one and the same, we call it H. And now we know that the points C, H, and G are collinear because here all the angles are right angles. And that's step number four. Let's go to step number five. In step number five, we are going to compare triangle C, A, E. So the red triangle. We are going to compare it to the green triangle, A, C, E, right? So C, A, E, compared to A, C, G, excuse me. What do we have here? We have a common side, obviously, A, C. And now pay attention, in the green triangle, on, the, on, one, on the, one of the edges of the common side, we have 10 degree angle, and on the other side, a 20 degree angle in the red triangle. One of the edges, 10 degree angle, the other edge, 20 degree angle. So angle, side, angle. Congruent. Triangle CAE is congruent 
with a triangle and now to pay attention to keep consistency when you name, when name the triangle so C A E is congruent with the triangle A C G okay so now we know that A G is congruent with so A G is equal with C E but C F is also equal to A F because the big triangle C A F is isosceles with the base A C because the angle here is 20 degrees and here is also 20 degrees so now we know that G F is equal to E F by subtraction all right but G F is equal also to D F because we proved at the previous point that triangle D G F is equilateral so knowing that GF is equal to DF and knowing that EF is equal to GF one can state that DF is equal to EF alright which will be seen in the next step that is quite important information and I'm going to our final step knowing that DF is equal to EF right so triangle DEF is isosceles with a base DE and because this angle here, DEF, has two components, x and 30 degrees, means that this angle here, EDF, has to be also x plus 30 degrees. And now, having all this information about this triangle, one can write the sum of all the angles in this triangle being equal to 180 degrees. So, x plus 30 degrees plus 80 degrees plus 30 degrees plus x equals to 180 degrees. So, 2x plus 60 degrees plus 80 degrees equals to 180 degrees. So, 2x plus 140 degrees equals to 180 degrees. So, 2x equals 40 degrees. So, x equals 20 degrees. And this is the solution for our problem. Yay! Alright. And now to recap the theory that has been used. We have been used the thing that the sum of all the measures of all the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. We have been used the theory of two parallel lines intersected by a second. We have used the definition of the isosceles triangle. The definition, not the property that the bisector of the angle that opposes the base is also the height and also the median. It led to that, but we proved that. We didn't use that. Okay? The definition of the equilateral triangle. The side angle side and the angle side angle postulates for triangle congruence. The vertical angle property of being equal to each other. Alright? Vertical angles property. Okay, so this was my demonstration. I hope it was um, clear and that uh, it made a better perspective for you. And uh, if you have any remarks or questions, feel free to hit the box below. Have a great day. Cheers.